studio tonight is neuropsychiatrist specialist Wali Oni. Thank sir. you very much. Diving in, moving straight to the questions. As we celebrate today as World Drug Abuse and Innocent Tuesday, mm -hmm. how would you say Nigerian fares in this dimension? Well, well um, I'm afraid to say we fared fairly poorly. Um, there's an upsurge in use of drugs, especially, um, you know, you have two types of drugs, categories. You have the licit ones and you have the illicit ones. Uh, the licit ones are alcohol, cigarettes, and uh, prescription medication. Um, where we are beginning to get it wrong is in the area of prescription medication. Um, before, you know, about 10 years ago, the main drugs of abuse was alcohol, cigarettes, and maybe Indian hemp. But now you're having an upsurge of a class of drugs called opioids. These are drugs that we usually prescribe uh, for pain, you know, things that have a doll, you know, there's a pentazosine, which is what we use specifically maybe for some people with sickle cell disease that have been going through a crisis. So, you, you, so there's an upsurge. Then there's also an upsurge of, like you heard in your broadcast, women using drugs particularly codeine, and particularly in certain parts of the country. You can see the upsurge in crime, in suicide bombings. Um, studies have shown that most people, it's not easy to be aggressive towards yourself. Most people use some of these drugs before they carry out certain actions. So, well, I guess the NDLA, um, uh, they have their work, work cut out for them, you know, but um, there's a three-point approach to which they are using. First is the enforcement. The second is where we come in as specialists, the harm reduction then the interaction with um, pharmacies, pharmaceutical companies, NAFDAQ, to make sure that these drugs, especially when they are prescription-only medication, you know, people get them with a prescription. All right, thank you very much. All you just said is quite enlightening, mm -hmm. but then for the sake of some, let's go back a bit. Okay. How would you define drug abuse? Um, okay, well, as let me first say a drug. A drug is a chemical substance with a known purpose or a known me uh, mechanism of action. Abuse is when you use something for a purpose other than what it's meant for. Abuse could be when you underdose, could be when you overdose, or when you use a drug for something else. You understand? Like, um, for instance, codeine, the uh, normal thing that is in cough syrup, when you use it to, because this, although it's, a, it's something that depress, is a depressant, but there's a euphoria before the depression. So when you use it other than for what it's meant, then we call it drug abuse. In our circle, we call it harmful use, actually. An addiction circle. Okay, mm -hmm. and you just listed some codeine and all of that, mm -hmm. but then I, I, I would like to know if there are other branches, that, like what other drugs are abused out there? And for instance, it depends on the demographics. Um, I, we carried out a study at the Lagos University, University Hospital. Um, most individuals who abuse drugs, they start abusing these drugs in late adolescence, between the ages of like 15 to 19 years of age. And usually the substances that are abused initially usually start with maybe depending on the part of the country, alcohol, cigarettes, then you know they go to Indian hemp, which is cannabis. Um, unfortunately, there's a new form of Indian hemp now that is out there that is called skunk. The, the, the street name is SK. They have different brands, the regulars, up, up till the higher one, I think they call it loud. You know, it sells for almost like 10,000 naira for the small ketchup container. You know, so these are the drugs that they initially um, begin to abuse. We call them gateway drugs. It is from here that they begin to progress, you know, to other, th other drugs like the codeine, like the tramal, um, like the ruchi. Ruchi is um, a benzodiazepine, it's a sedative hypnotic. Uh, people use to sleep, like Valium, for instance. Uh, it's been abused extensively by our young people. Then now, because uh, cocaine, Cocaine is expensive, so there's the cocaine uh, hydrochloride, which is crack, which is also extremely addictive. And people who use crack can do almost anything to get a fix. So then you have the, the elderly people who usually have problems sleeping. You know, they tend to be over-prescribed uh, the sleeping medications, and they ultimately get, get, get hooked on it. And of course, these drugs, if you use it for a while, it can be toxic to certain um, organ systems.
Okay, mm. that's that's quite enlightening. You just mentioned the adolescents, yes. you know, and then the classes of drugs they abuse, mm. and you mentioned the elderly too, mm. and the classes of drugs. Mm. Are these only the two? What about the middle-aged people? Do we find drug abuse amongst this sect, or it's just mainly the adolescents and the elderly? Um, um, th there is actually a progression. That is why I like the theme for the International Day um, Against Drug Abuse and Illicit Drug Abuse. Um, um, listen first. You know, when um, people usually start using drugs 15 to 19, you know, uh, they're what does this What does it do? You know, people put pit latrines and getting the ammonia out, you know, things like that, where you have adolescents do that, you know. Phase, when they experiment with these drugs and, and the effects, they're getting you know, they, they now start using it recreationally, you know, they use it, then after that it becomes purposeful, they, you know, they use it to sleep, they use it to wake up, you know, they use it to, to, to be bold, they use it for different purposes, then ultimately they now become dependent, that is what you people might call addicts or addiction, you know, but we call it dependence. Uh, uh, when the person is dependent on this drug, it's no longer, it's now, it's now a disease in which the individual can't really help himself, because when you're dependent on a drug, you need to use the drug to get that increased doses, to get that same effect. Then again, if you decide even not to use the drug, there's this, there are these nasty withdrawal symptoms that they have, you know, where, 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 where they now use the drug to prevent those withdrawal symptoms from occurring, rather than the pleasurable effects. That is when we say that the brain has been totally rewired. It's, it's, like, it's like fuel, you know, when, when, when it's low, they have the symptoms and they really need treatment. That is, that is quite sad. And then talking about the adolescents and the young ones who mm. go through these experimental phases, yeah. like you said, now the parents and caregivers seem quite helpless in this stage. What are the early warning signs you can give out to brilliant, them? Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant question. Um, basically, you should know your child. Listen first. We are very busy on our phones, on our laptops. You know, we, 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 we sort of like, you know, put the care of our kids to nannies and to, you know, to, to other people. You cannot take care of your child better than yourself. You need to know your child, observe your child. Um, certain things like changes in mood, you know, all of a sudden, you know, the child starts behaving in a way that are disrespectful and all of that, you know. You have problem changes in sleep patterns. You, you begin to see things, the, the child comes looking haggard, you know, conjunctival hyperemia, that's redness of the eye, always seem, seeming to be, you know, drowsy and sleepy, you know. Also, when the child begins to have a drop in, in the grades in school, begin to do poorly in school, you begin to see the child mixing with certain people. This is a high index of suspicion that your child might be using drugs. So these are some of the things that we look out for. And it's at this, this stage that the child can actually be helped because by the time they get into their 20s and 30s and they become full-blown dependent people, you know, um, the tri treatments are there, but you know, it's, 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 a, it's a tough battle. So it's better to catch them early and stop them early. That's why I like the theme, you know, listen first. Listen this year. First. That's that's quite good. But then talking about what you just said, the okay. dependency stage. Mm. Unfortunately, some families have gone past this early warning yes. side. Some yes. are at that point yes. of dependency yes. and addictions. Mm. Are there permanent remedies to these problems? Um, it, it it's a disorder, and it's not like um, malaria that you use a drug and it goes away. Mm. When these people, when the person actually, there are two things. Either the person you know, wants to change, well, wants to cut off the drugs, or the person, you know, the family members, they stage an intervention and bring the person, you know, to the rehab for care. Uh, uh, there are treatment, treatments, you've got um, pe people like us in the field, um, psychiatr psychiatrists, addiction specialists, clinical psychologists, and all of that. Uh, there are basically two phases to the treatment. You have the detoxification phase and you now have the rehabilitation phase. You know, so there are treatments, but at times you don't get things right the first time. Maybe they get to come in like once, twice, or three times before they eventually get it. Some people, it might be a life-changing experience. I know somebody who used drugs and, you know, you know, was involved in an accident, decided to change. Most women, by the time they start having kids, you know, they stop. You know, so with the treatments, at times first, second, third, you know, but, but no, no treatment is worse than, at least even the period that they are in rehab and they are not using drugs, their body is recuperating. So you cannot say no treatment is, 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 uh, is better than treatment. Treatment is always better. And I, I know people that do well and get back on their feet. You know, it, it's, it's something, but we need, we need a strong effort. You know, the NDLEA, you know, either with his funding or, you know, lack of, and they're not 
bring people are not coming together, the different fields, you know, because even NAFDAQ, you can, you know, because right now you, you're having paracetamol with dihydrocodine being sold without prescription. And some of these people who market these drugs, they know that these things are addictive. You understand? So, so, and um, even this codeine cough syrup, you can just get it without, without prescriptions. And they have treated pe uh, people who, by the time they decide on their own to stop taking the codeine, they begin to have seizures. And we've lost a couple of people like that just from simple cough syrup. So people take up to eight, nine, ten bottles in a day. How can you go to work? How can you function with that kind of high level of drug use? So, the, I mean, it, it, it's an epidemic. It's an epidemic. And the, and the problem is that, you know, you have people who are high society people who their kids have these problems. Then they are not speaking out. The low society wants they are not speaking out. So it's it's like it's all oh, there's a stigma just like with that there was with HIV. There's a stigma to drug use, and I think we need to begin to open up and realize that there's a real uh, imminent danger. Because even besides that, the, the 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 what's the crime and all of that that comes with it too is also there. Okay, that's that's quite sad. Talking about the treatment procedure that sacks off as this, uh, detoxification, detoxification yes. and all of that, and boiling down to how society has, you know, reacted yes. concerning all of this drug abuse and all of that, you called on the government to also, mm -hmm. you know, come out and help mm -hmm. and everything. What last words would you say to families, to the society, to the government? What call would you make as a person, as a specialist mm -hmm. in this field to Nigerians out there? And um, first of all, is that for the family, know your child, uh, prevention is better than cure. Usually when they are the ages of 16 to 19, they are not really um, full-blown dependents and you know, with, with care and support it can be stopped. Those of them who are, become, are addicts, they should they require treatment. Um, if you commit a crime while under the influence of drugs, you still need to go through the normal um, punishments, you know, but you, there needs need to be care. Then also more importantly, the government, there needs to be stronger restrictions. You can't go outside the country, Europe, America, and get codeine and get tramadol and get pentazosine. You know, there needs to be enforcement. Um, pharmacies who sell these things to these people with this substance use problem, they need to shut them down. They need to seize what they have. These drugs are poisons. They are dangerous. So you can't just take it anyhow. I think that's the most important thing, access. Access to these drugs it needs to be reg regulated and, uh, and um, limited should only get it with the doctor's prescription. All right, sir, thank you very much. That's quite an enlightening one. And okay. I'm sure with this call and everything, everybody who is, you know, involved in this sect will take a pew to your call and then listen. Thank you very much. It's You're so welcome. lovely having you in the studio. So it's lovely to be here.